Doon sa mga umusipon lang ang pinapagaling, parang, parang hindi sila masyadong kumbinsido na nagpapagaling ang Diyos. Amen? Pero pag po ang pinapagaling na po ng Diyos ay mga cancerous na po, doon na po nila nare-realize na nagpapagaling po ang Diyos. Pero ganun pa man, ang Diyos po ay Diyos ng, uh, siya po ay nagpapagaling ng mga malilita karamdaman at malalaking karamdaman. Amen. Bakit po? Dahil ang ang pangalan po ng Panginoong Heso Kristo ay higit sa lahat ng pangalan. Kahit po sa pangalan ng mga sickness ay higit po ang pangalan ng ating Panginoong Heso. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoong Heso. Bakit po sinabi yan? Last week po, as I said, nag-share po si Pastor Dennis ng isang healing regarding the na Santa Sena. Ano po yung ginagawa ng Santa Sena? Yung blood po ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay nagpapagaling po. Yung kanyang, sa mamagitan ng kanyang nasuga, tayo ay pinagaling ng ating Panginoong Heso. And then that day, Friday, yung wife ko po, dinala po sa ospital. But the Lord touched me, He told me that He is a God of control. Amen? Amen. Amen. Kahit ano po ang sitwasyon na meron tayo, si Jesus po ang nakaupo sa trono ng Diyos. Are you with me? Amen. Alam niya po ang lahat ng nangyayari. Siya po ang may-ari ng lahat ng bagay. Siya po ang nakaupo sa trono ng Diyos. Amen. Kahit ano pa ang sitwasyon na meron tayo, iniingatan po tayo ng Panginoong Sumisto. Amen. Sa kapangyarihan, ng banal na Espiritu Santo. That day, dinala lang, dinala lang mga ng in-laws ko yung aking minamahal na asawa sa hospital. On the second day, na-operate siya. On that second day, tagumpay po yung operation ng ginawa ng Panginoon doon sa akin. Purihin po ang Panginoon sa kanya po ang lahat ng karangalan at ang lahat ng kapuryan. Amen. Sige po, tayo po ay magpapatuloy sa ating pag-aaralan. Hallelujah. Ang title po na ating pag-aaralan ay Let, Let's Meet at the Altar. Altar, actually kanina po habang tayo po ay nagpupuri sa Panginoon, when we are giving praises to God, when we are singing to God, we are meeting the Lord in the altar. Tayo po ay nakikipag-meet na sa Diyos. Tayo po ay lumalapit na sa Panginoon sa altar ng Diyos. Naaalala ko pa nga po, nung ako po ay uh, bata pa, meron pong pagpasok nyo po sa bahay namin, meron pong mga uh, uh, sa left side, meron pong parang figurine. Ang tawag po ng lola ko ay altar. Nakaka-relate po ba tayo? Yes. Meron pong ganun. Okay, but in the view of God, what is an altar? An altar is a raised area in a house of worship where people can honor God with offerings. Minsan nga po, doon sa altar, meron pa pong mga offering na, let's say, may mga pagkain pa po doon. Pero, sa altar po ng Diyos, where people can honor God with offerings, it is a prominent in the Bible as God's table, a sacred place for sacrifices and gifts offered up to God. Yun po ang altar. A place of ceremony, a marriage or death. Kahit po yung marriage at saka yung death, ginagana po sa altar. Let's say, namatayan po tayo o ikinasal po tayo, tayo po ay nanunumpa doon sa altar. Sabi ka po nung ikinakasal, till death do us part. We will be together. Sabi doon. So, sa altar po, yung altar po is a sacred place. Sacred place para po imit natin ang Diyos. Hindi po ang tao ang, ang inimimit natin doon sa altar, kundi ang Diyos. We will meet the Lord, the God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Sabi nga doon sa pinag-usapan namin kagabi, heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. We, meet, we will meet Him at the altar. Hallelujah. An altar can also be something constructed for the sole purpose of opening sacrifices. This is the most common usage of the term. Man of God in the Bible builds altar for, for God after he had done 
things for them like Moses in Exodus chapter 17 verse 15. Abraham, Isaac, Solomon, and etc. Marami po nga mga examples na ang Diyos po ay nakikipagtagpo doon sa altar. They need an altar so as to meet God at the same, at that place. I remember, yung mga last lesson po na na-share ko po sa inyo, kung sino pong nakakalala sa atin, Elisha, you know, si, si Elijah, remember po si Elijah? Elijah, siya po ay, she is running, okay? Siya po ay hinahabol ni Jezebel, remember? Hinahabol po siya ni Jezebel. And then suddenly, sabi ni, sabi ni, ni, ni Elijah sa, sa, sa mga, sa mga propeta ni Jezebel, okay, let's meet on that place. Tapos naglagay sila ng altar. Amen? Nakangawa mo ba natin? So, kinatagpo nila ang Diyos sa lugar na yun, doon sa altar na yung aking sinasabi po. For a Jew, it might be a structure where animals are sacrificed. Sa mga Jew po, may mga mga pagkakataon po until now, may nagpa-practice pa po na nag-offer po sila ng mga sacrifices, mapatay po sila ng mga tupa, ng mga kambing, just to sacrifice in replace para ma-cover po yung kanilang mga kasalanan. Okay po. Ito po ay picture ni Abraham. Okay? Picture ni Abraham where he offered his son, his own son, his one and only son to the altar. Okay, the next one is, ito po ay picture naman ni uh, Jacob. Okay? Si Jacob po, hinahabol po siya. Ah, sorry. Siya po ay picture ni Isaac. Okay? Hinahabol po siya ng kanyang kapatid. Okay, at that time po ay uh, uh, nakakita po siya ng, uh, ng uh, dream doon at ginawa niya po itong Bethel, yung altar po. Okay, let's proceed po. 2 <coughs> Samuel chapter 24 verse 18, 24 to 25. Pabasahin po natin kung kayo po ay may mga Bible na dala, ay basahin po natin. And God came that day to David and said to him, Go up! Raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Orona, the Jebusite. But, verse 24, But the king said to Orona, No, but I will buy it from, from, your, from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offering to the Lord, to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for the 50 shekels of silver. Tayo po ay manalangin. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we come into your throne, Father God, to meet you in the altar. Father, naririto po ang iyong mga anak, Panginoon, nakapikit ang aming mga mata, kami po ay lumalapit sa iyo. Salamat sa oras at araw, Panginoon, na kami ay kinakatagpo mo sa altar, sa aming mga personal na, na oras ng panalangin, Panginoon. At ngayon, Panginoon, maunawaan po namin, Panginoon, na bigyan namin ng halaga ang pakikipagtagpo sa iyo, Panginoon, sa iyong altar, Father God. Salamat po. Kasihan mo ang iyong lingkod, Panginoon, ang iyong Banal Espiritu Santo, Father God. Wala po akong kaalaman. Ikaw lamang, Panginoon, na magsalita sa aming kalagitnaan, aking Diyos. Salamat sa iyong kapatawaran sa aming managawang pagkakasala sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa, Panginoon. And now, I declare, Father God, Open our mind, open our hearts, Father God. Sa iyong karangalan, Panginoon, sa pangalan mo lang ang, ang lahat ng kapurihan. Sa pangalan ng Jesus, everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 2, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 24, 18 and 24 to 24. Ang, kar, ang, ang kasaysayan kong ito ay, uh, uh, ito pong si King David ay uh, pinasensus niya po yung buong Jerusalem. Ay yung buong Israel. He makes sense as he count every man who can fight. Yung mga tao po na po pwede nga lumaban sa gera. Okay. And then, sabi nung isang uh, nung isang uh, nung isang, nung isang uh, general niya, sabi niya, King David, bakit po ipapa uh, why, why do we need uh, to census the, the the people of Jerusalem, the people of Israel? Ito po ay labag sa kalooban ng Diyos. This is not good in the sight of God. 
But he insisted, census, count all the people of Israel. Okay, and then sa verse 18, dumating po, na sa verse 17 po ang 16, sabi doon, nakita niya na nagkasara si David, nakita ni David na nagkamali siya. Kaya dumating po yung verse 18, ang sabi po doon, and God came that day to David and said to him, Okay, para mapatawad ang iyong mga kasalanan, go up, raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. We need an altar to meet the Lord. We need a sacred place to meet God. You cannot meet God in a place which is not sacred place. For sure. You cannot meet God in a place where napapaligiran ka ng maraming mga pagkakasala, maraming kang dalang-dalang bigatin. Okay? Kailangan natin uh, uh, ibaba yung ating mga bita, bigatin iyon. O isuko sa Panginoon ang iyong mga bigatin para ikaw ay makalapit <coughs> sa altar ng Diyos. Kanina po, habang nag-aawitan, may mga nandirito na hindi nararanasan ang presensya ng Diyos. Pero yung ibas, more of us, napipil nila, nararanas na nila ang presensya ng Diyos. Why? Because they are prepared to meet the Lord in the altar of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Mula pa lamang po sa pagpapractice ng music team, ako po yung umiiyak na umiiyak sa Panginoon. Ito Lord, I cannot contain your presence, Father. Bakit po? Dahil iminimit po natin Diyos, kinakatagpo natin po ang Panginoon sa bawat oras ng ating buhay, ang presensya ng Diyos. When you come into the presence of God, you cannot contain the presence of God in you. Whether you like it or not, you will fall down. You will fall down in a way that you will surrender everything to God. Not it doesn't mean na kailangan mong lumuhon. It doesn't mean na kailangan mong umiyak, no? Mean, you will fall down because you cannot contain the presence of God in you. And for sure, when you are entered to the altar, you will repent and you will see that you are sinner like David. Everybody sin. Everybody. Walang exemption, sabi ng Romans chapter 3 verse 10. And wala akong nakita kahit isa. Lahat nagkasala. Amen? Makakamin po ba natin sa ating sarili yun? Sa Panginoon? Makasalaman po tayo. That is why, sabi kanina ng Emil, kailangan kong pumunta sa altar ng Diyos. Lumapit sa Diyos. Bakit? Kailangan ko ng Diyos. Hindi ko kayang iligtas ang aking sarili. Hallelujah. Hindi mo kayang iligtas ang sarili mo. We cannot save our lives so we need to draw we need to come to the altar of God. Bakit, pastor? Ano pa ang meron sa altar? Ito po. Kung ano ang meron sa altar. And David built there an altar to the Lord. And offered back offering and peace offering. So the Lord responded to the plea of the land. And the flock were averted from Israel. Inalis po ng Diyos. Kapag lumapit ka sa Diyos, aalisin ng Diyos ang mga sumpa. Ang mga salot na meron tayo alatalan natin dahil sa ating mga nagawang pagkakasala katulad ng ginawa ni King David. Hallelujah. While you're in the place, several things need to happen. Kapag ikaw ay pumaroon, pumasok, when you enter to the altar, when you meet God in the altar, may mga bagay na mangyayari. Number one, the altar is a place for worship. Yes. Amen. 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 This place is an altar. It's an altar. Are you with me? When you sing a song, when you sing a praise and worship to the Lord, you are entering and meet the Lord and meeting the Lord into the altar. Yes. Hallelujah. Do you meet the Lord this week in the altar? Do you meet God in His altar? Because an altar is a place of worship. You cannot bring the presence of God into the altar if you are not from the altar. Church, 
You cannot bring yung kaibigan mo sa Panginoon kapag wala ka naman sa Panginoon. Aha. Hallelujah. The altar is a place of worship. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. Yan sabi po doon. Then Noah built an altar and sacrificed on it some of the animals and the birds. God and birds God had designated for that purpose. David, ah uh, sorry, Noah find an altar for God after the flood. And when are you waiting? Going to the altar is that only when you are in a suffering. Uh, may mga pagkakataon, it's very good to, to cry out to God when you're in a suffering. But, the, Noah, after the victory, he go to the altar. In all circumstances, meet the Lord into the altar in worship, in adoration. Ang sabi nga kanina sa awit, O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. Place of altar of an adoration and amazement is the place you can worship the Lord. You cannot worship the Lord without adoration, without amazement. Why? Nakita ni Noah, nagkaroon ng ng uh, rainbow. And, then, and he was amazed. The Lord will not, uh, hindi na niya gugunawin ang mundo sa pangagitan ng tubig. It is God's promise. Kaya huwag kang matakot kapag may baha. Hindi gugunawin ng Diyos ang mundong ito sa pangagitan ng tubig. Nung isang araw, mulan, yung mga kasama ko sa office, na Indonesian house may takot na takot sila baka na bumaha. And then, doon sa aming portico, meron kami portico doon, punong-puno ng tubig. The Lord, hindi po gugunawin ng Diyos ang mundong ito sa pagkakit ng tubig. Bakit? There is God's promise. The rainbow. The rainbow in the morning and the rainbow in the afternoon and the rainbow in the noon time is there is available. His promise is available. His altar is available. Why? The altar is a place of worship, adoration, and amazement. Hallelujah. Not only when we, we are in the storms of His of his life, but also in the other side of those storms, we should be at the altar praising God for all that He has done. No one, no distraction, available daily, but meeting at the same place at the same time make the place and the time special meeting at the altar. Do you meet the Lord this morning at the altar? Do you meet God in the altar? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It makes them altar. Kapag ginagawa mo ito araw-araw, ginagawa mo ito sa pagkakataon na itinalaga mo ang oras na ito, you dedicated this time, you dedicated this place for the Lord. Lord, magbibit tayo, babasahin ko ang iyong word, so, sasambahin kita sa oras na ito. It makes an altar. It makes that place sacred. Bakit? Nakipagtagpo ka sa Diyos. Hallelujah. Katulad po ni Noah, katulad ng aking sinasabi kanina. Number two, the altar is a place of love, sacrifice, love opening. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2 and 7 to 9. Sabi po ng verse 1, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, you know when you have relationship with, relationship with God, He will call you by name. He will call you by name. When you have good relationship and you, your relationship with the Lord is maayos ang relationship mo sa Diyos. Kasasabi, tatawagin ka niya sa pangalan mo. Abraham. Yung mga boss natin, minsan tinatawag tayo. Hoy, you come. Bakit? Their thinking, as, their thinking is their boss. But the Lord you are special. You are called by His name. By your name. You will not be called. You lazy come. 
Sometimes ganun ang mga boss eh, di ba? You lazy, come, come here. Tinatawag tayo doon sa mga, sa mga weak side na meron tayo. Use, sometimes stupid pa nga eh. You lazy, come. Hindi po ganun ang Diyos. Hallelujah. Here I am. Ang sagot ni Abraham, nung tinawag siya ng Diyos, here I am. Kapag halimbawa ba, tinawag ka, Mike, come. Ang isasagot po kaya, here I am. Hallelujah. Here I am. Verse 2, And he said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him, offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. The Lord himself, okay, ang Diyos mismo, tinesting niya si Abraham. Okay? <coughs> Kailangan ni Abraham na i-offer yung kanyang kaisa-isang anak. Okay. I-offer niya sa Diyos. Dadali niya sa Diyos. At makikipag ang Diyos. Makikipag tagpo ang Diyos doon sa altar. Hallelujah. Sabi po ng verse 3. Sabi po doon sa verse 3. Early in the morning. Hindi ko na po nilagay. Early in the morning. Abraham. Go to the mountain with his son and his servant. Verse 4, sabi doon. Sa verse 4, sabi doon. Iniwanan ni Abraham yung kanyang mga servant. Verse 5 and 6. Iniwanan ni Abraham yung kanyang servant. I Stay lang kayo dito. Aakit kami ng aking anak at makikipagtakbo kami sa Diyos doon sa altar. Verse 7. And Isaac said to the father Abraham, to, and Isaac said to his father Abraham, Sabi ni Isaac, My father, my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Very sweet. Very close your relationship. My father, here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood. Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb? for a burnt offering. Nagtatanong siya, nasa na yung lamb for the burnt offering? Yung, yung pile and wood is ready. But where is the lamb? Sabi po ng verse 8, Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for burnt offering, my son. So they went both, both of them together. Verse 9, when they came to the place which God had told him, Abraham Ang Diyos mismo ang naglagay, nag, nagbigay ng, oh, nagbigay ng, uh, ng place. Sabi doon, Abraham built the, the altar there and laid the wood on, in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. Hallelujah. Abraham is willing to sacrifice his only son. Okay? Para mapatunayan sa Diyos na inibig niya ang Diyos at handa siyang sumunod sa Diyos. Ano ang pinakamahalagang bagay na meron tayo? Na po pwede mong isakripisyo sa Diyos. Na hanggang ngayon, kapit-kapit mo pa rin, yakap-yakap mo pa rin yung pinakamahalagang bagay nito na hindi mo kayang isurrender sa ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. But when God saw nang makita ng Diyos that Abraham is willing to give his son the love of the Father, his love was remembered. Jesus gave the Father, gave his, excuse me, his only son. The Father gave His only Son. Jesus died as an offering, a living sacrifice, died once and for all. Tuloy ko po yung story. Ah. Pagdating po doon, nung papatayin na po si Isaac, sabi ng angel, huwag mong saktan ang bata. Merong nakalaan. Merong isang uh, batang tupa na nakasabit yung kanyang munting sungay doon sa sana, siya ang i-offer mo doon sa 
burnt offering doon sa altar. And this symbolize dapat si Isaac yung mapapat mamatay doon sa altar. Pero hindi siya namatay. May ibang namatay in his place. Merong namatay in your place. Merong namatay, merong nagsakripisyo in your place. At hindi ito tupa, hindi ito kambing. Sino nga nagsakripisyo? Anong Isus? Look at verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Living Bible. The Living Bible. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Ipinadala na ang tanyang, excuse me, buktong na alam. Nung tayo yung mga nakasalanan pa para ipakita yung pag-ibig ng Ama sa kanyang anak. He sent His Son. He showed His great love for us by sending His Son. Sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Hallelujah. That is great love. Ito na po ang pinakadakilang pag-ibig na meron ng Diyos. At matatagpuan mo lang nito doon sa altar. Yung great love ng Diyos, the great love of God, you can only find that great love doon sa altar <coughs> ng Diyos. Hallelujah. This is an example, Abraham and Isaac. God chose to meet us, speak to us, and hear from us. Ang Diyos mismo ang pipili. Hindi ikaw ang pumili sa Diyos. Sabi ng John chapter 15 verse 16. Ako ang pumili sa iyo. Hindi ikaw ang pumili sa akin. Wala kang ginawa. Ako ang pumili sa iyo. Kaya tayo nandito dito, kaya ka nandito dito. You are here because God chosen you. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Sabi po doon, For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Marami yung mga tinawang, pero kakaunti lang yung pinili. At kasama kayo sa mga pinili, <coughs> pinili, excuse me, pinili ng Diyos. Hallelujah, Jesus. Most often, at our altar, if you look in the Old Testament, it was the altar that God revealed most about Himself. Kapag hindi po tayo nakikipagtagpo sa Diyos, maliit na bahagi lamang yung ating nauunawaan sa Diyos. Bakit? Hindi po kinakatagpo ang Diyos. Only small part, only small uh, character of God revealed to us when you are not going to the altar. So, we need to go to the altar. Hallelujah. God revealed, revealed most about Himself His likes, His desire, His character in the altar. You know, alam niyo po, may mga pagkakataon kapag hindi po tayo sumasambat sa Diyos, hindi natin naranasan ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. But, kapag ikaw ay sumamba sa Diyos, ikaw ay makasalanan. Hindi ka harapat dapat. Lahat ng iyon, mariridil ng Diyos kapag ikaw ay nandoroon sa altar ng Diyos. Hallelujah. If you are, if you remove the altar experiences, we would know very little about God. One thing we learn from them is the altar is special. <coughs> Kailangan po po ba natin ng altar? Hallelujah. Sa atin po mga binibigkas at sa atin pinag-aralan sa, umar- sa umagang ito, do we really need to make an altar? Kailangan pa po ba? Abraham did not kill a lamb and offer it on a pile of sticks just anywhere. Hindi po, hindi po ginawa ni Abraham doon sa likod ng bahay niya. Minit ang Diyos. Hindi po dyan doon kinatagpo ang Diyos. Bakit? Merong nakaraan na panahon at oras ang Diyos para katagpuin po si Abraham. Hallelujah. 
He built an altar then. He offered the sacrifices there. An altar was not a pile of sticks thrown down wherever you were or wherever was easy. An altar is a preferred place. Ito po ay preferred place. Nakahanda ka, nakahanda ang Diyos. Set apart for that purpose. This is I believe. I believe God would not have accepted Abraham's offering on a pile of sticks back at home. Hindi po. Kaniniwala po ako dito. Bakit po? Meron po talaga itinalaga ang Diyos para katagpuin po tayo ng Panginoon. It doesn't mean na wala ang Diyos sa likod ng bahay ni Abraham. No. But you will experience God when you enter, when you meet Him at the altar. Hallelujah. Jesus. God showed Abraham where to build an altar. He will show you your altar as well. Sasabihin din ng Diyos sa iyo saan ang altar. And this place is an altar for us. Hallelujah. The altar is the place number three. The altar is a place of forgiveness, tolerance, and amnesty. Nasa UAE po tayo. Meron pong uh, year of tolerance. Are you with me? Amen. Meron pong amnesty na naganap itong nakakaraan lamang at marami po ang mga Pilipino <laughs> na nag-abel ng amnesty. Because year of tolerance. Ito po yung year of tolerance logo ng UAE. Ang sabi po doon sa Leviticus 4, 25 and 26. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on, on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of its blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering. Verse 26. Ito po ang isang mahalaga. And, and, all is, and all its fat he shall burn on the altar like the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings so the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin and he shall be forgiven. Forgiven. The altar is a place of forgiveness. Chapter chapter uh, 4 and chapter 5, Leviticus, pag binasa po natin ito, it talks about forgiveness. <coughs> Pinag-uusapan po ang dugo ng uh, pinatay na burnt offering or uh, sin offering. So, sa altar po, makikita po natin yung pagpapatawad po ng Diyos. Maralanasan po natin yung pagpapatawad po ng Diyos kapag tayo po ay pumasok sa altar ng Panginoon. Sabi po dito, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, For in the Christ died for us, for sins once and for all, the just and righteous for the unjust and unrighteous the innocent for the guilty, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Namatay po yung isang taong walang kasalanan para sa makasalanan. Yung taong just, doon sa unjust. Kayo po ba? Isa po ba tayo sa dahilan kaya po namatay ang ating Panginoon Jesus? kasama po tayo. We are unrighteous. Pero namatay po ang ating Panginoon Heso Kristo dahil ino-offer niya po yung sarili niya para sa ating nagawang mga pagkakasala. Hallelujah. If we want to be in the presence of God and truly sense His holiness and fear from His heart, we need to go to the altar. Para maranasan mo, maunumaan mo, na ikaw ay makasalanan at kailangan mo ng pagpapatawad, kailangan mong pumunta lumapit sa altar ng Diyos. You will not realize and you cannot realize for sure that you are a sinner if you did not experience meeting God in His altar. Bakit? Hindi mo marirealize na makasalanan ka. Katulad ni David, kailangan niyang magtayo ng altar and he realized 
that he needs forgiveness. We need to go to the altar. Number four, the altar is the place of personal encountering with, a, with God. Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 8. Anointing is given, His presence was in the altar. Si Isaiah po, ito po, kanina po, puro mga example, mga God character, mga Godly character po. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Ito po, tinagalog po po talaga ito. Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 8. Nung taon na pagkamatay ni Hari Gosiya, nakita ko ang Panginoon na nakupo sa napakatas na trono. Ang mahalong damit niya ay tumakip sa buong templo. May mga makalangit na nila lang sa gawing ulo niya. Ang bawat isa sa kanila ay may anong na pakpak. Ang dalawang pakpak ay nakatakip sa kanilang muka. Ang dalawa ay nakatakip sa kanilang paa. At ang dalawa ay ginagamit nila sa paglipad. Hallelujah. Sinabi ni Sinasabi nila sa isa't isa, banal, banal, banal ang Panginoong makapangyarihan. Ang kapangyarihan niya ay sumasakop sa buong mundo. Sa lakas ng tinig nila, nayanig ang mga pundasyon ng templo at tapuno ng usok ang loob ng templo. Hallelujah. Bakit po? God's presence is there. Kapag nasa altar po tayo, nandoon po ang presensya ng Diyos. Hallelujah! Kapag tayo ay pumasok, nakipag-meet po tayo sa altar ng Diyos, mararanasan mo ang presensya ng Diyos. Sa ayaw mo sa gusto, mararanasan natin ang pang-ibig ng Diyos when we come to the altar of God. Hallelujah! Sa lakas ng tinig nila, nayanig ang mga pundasyon ng templo at napuno ng usok ang loob ng <clears throat> templo. Sinabi ko, Nakakaawa ako, tiyak na mapapahamak ako dahil ako'y may makasala ng labi at naninirahan ako sa piling ng mga taong makasalanan, makasalanan din ang mga labi. At ngayon nakita ko ang hari, ang Panginoong makapangyarihan. When you go into the altar, makikita mo na makasalanan ka. Hallelujah! Marirealize mo, tingnan mo yun. Si, si, si Isaiah po ay propeta na. Pero when he meet The Lord in the altar of God. Nakita niya, makasalanan siya. Hindi lamang siya ang nakita niya makasalanan, kundi ang kanyang mga, ang mga taong nakapaligid sa kanya. Ang buong Israel ay makasalanan sa harapan ng Diyos. Verse 6, ang sabi doon, pagkatapos, lumipad ang isa sa mga makalangit na nilalang papunta sa akin. May dala siyang baga na kinuwas niya sa altar. Yung altar po, meron pong baga doon sa Old Testament. Meron pong isang anghel kumuha ng baga para linisin si Isaiah. Nilagay doon sa kanyang dila. Verse 7, Nilipat niya ang baga sa ang bibig at sinabi, hinipon ito ang iyong bibig at wala ka ng kasalanan dahil pinatawad ka na. When you go into the altar, God's presence and God's anointing is there, is always available. And you, when you go to the altar, He will present, He will tell you, God will tell you that you are forgiven. Sasabihin sa'yo ng Diyos, ikukonfirm sa'yo ng Diyos na ikaw ay pinatawad na ng Diyos. Pagkatapos, narinig ko ang tinig ng Panginoon na nagsasabi, sino ang susuguhin ko? When we go to the altar, makikipag-usap sa'yo ang Diyos. Paano mo malalaman ang ipapagawa ng Diyos kung hindi mo siya kinakatagpo sa alta? Yo okay na. Paano mo malalaman na kailangan mo pang ibahagi ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa iyong kapwa kung hindi ka papasok sa alta ng Diyos? Hindi mo ma hindi mo ma hindi mo matatanggap ang kanya nga tinatawag na instruction. Ang sagot, sino ang susuguin ko? Sino ang lalakad para sa amin? Sumagot ako, sabi ni Isaiah. Narito po ako. Ako ang isugo. When we meet God in the altar, makikita po natin, kagabi po, habang nag-uusap po kami, doon sa isang prayer time po namin, nabangit po, na marami po ang aanihin. 
pero kakantod, kakaunti po ang mga mga ani. Ang tanong ng Diyos, sino ang susuhuin ko? The harvest is plenty. But the workers are few. Whom will I send? Kali. Kali. Here am I, send Kali. Here am I, send ah, uh, sino pa? Send brother Francis. Here am I, send the person beside me. Hindi po gano'n. Here am I, send me. When you go to the altar, sasabihin mo sa Diyos, here am I, send me. Not send the brother, your brother beside you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ito pa po, 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 11. Napakaganda pong halimbawa. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was real. Kakaunti po ang tinig ng Diyos. There were not, there were not many visions. Wala po masyadong mga pangitain. Okay? One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down on his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone, gone out, and Samuel was lying down. Ito po si Samuel, itong bata si Samuel, eh, eh, dun lamang po siya natutulog, malapit po sa altar. Yung tinatawag na, makikita po natin namaya, in the house of, uh, lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of the call, where the ark of God was. Dun lamang po natutulog sa, sa ark of the covenant, malapit po sa ark of the covenant. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here am I. Here I am. Sabi niya. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. Called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Hindi kita kinawag. Bumalik ka doon. Matulog ka na. Kapag sinabi ko po, Cheryl, Cheryl, hindi ako tumawag sa iyo. Ang Diyos na tumawag sa iyo. Kapag sinabi, Michael, hindi po ako tumawag sa iyo. Dinala ka ng Diyos dito, hindi po ako tumawag sa iyo. Ang Diyos tumawag sa iyo. Amen. Hindi ba? Hindi si Mira na yung anak ang tumawag sa iyo dito. Ang Diyos Yes, yes. Casey, yung ganda ng pangalan ni ate. Casey, ang Diyos ang tumawag sa iyo. Are you with me? Hallelujah! Sabi po doon sa verse 7, But before that, ito po yung tinutulugan itong batang si Samuel. Ito po yung uh, uh, painting po, larawan po ito ng uh, tabernacle. Diyan lamang po sa lugar na yan, dito po sa lugar na ito, diyan lamang natutulog ang batang si Samuel sa paligid ng lugar na yan. So, Samuel is very familiar. Yung mga, yung mga propeta po, hindi po sila makakapasok dito sa tabernacle because This is a holy of the holiest. Kapag pumasok ka dyan, mamamagay ka. Ba't itong batang si Samuel, natutulog lang dyan araw-araw. Nakukuha ko ba natin? Ganun siya ka-close sa Diyos. Ganun, ka, ganun siya ka-espesyal sa harapan ng Diyos. Ipagpatuloy po natin. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Bagamat doon siya natutulog, hindi pa siya masyadong, hindi niya pa masyadong kilala ang Diyos. Pero kilala siya ng Diyos. Why? The Lord called him. Nico. Nico ba? The Lord called him by his name. The Lord called us by our name. Same as Samuel. The Lord called him by his name. Even though hindi pa niya masyadong kilala ang Diyos. 
kahit noon, hindi mo pa kilala ang Diyos, kilala ka na ng Diyos. Amen. Hallelujah. Kaya sabi po doon, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Verse 8. A third time to a third time the Lord called Samuel. Called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, "Here I am. You called me." Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Hindi na po talaga si Eli ang tumatawag kundi ang Diyos ang tumatawag sa batang ito. So Eli The mentor of Samuel told Samuel, Go and lie down, and he, he calls you, Say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. <coughs> so Samuel went, he followed Eli, and lay down in his place. Kapag po kaya tayo ay tinawag ng ating mentor, Come, lalapit po kaya tayo? Susunod po kaya tayo sa ating mentor, katulad di, ni Samuel na sumunod sa kanyang mentor na si Eli? Hallelujah. Verse 10, the Lord come and stood there, calling at the other time, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Verse 11, and the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone, everyone who hears about to think. Yan, hindi po na pag-uusapan yun. Kung ano po ang sinabi ni Sam, ng Diyos kay Samuel. But the fact that God called you and the, the number four is a place. Hallelujah. Anointing is available. Katulad po ni Isaiah kanina. Yung pagkakatawag ng Diyos kapag ikaw ay pumasok sa presensya ng Diyos, maririnig mo ang boses ng Diyos at pipiliin ka ng Diyos. Sa kauliulihan po, dito na po tayo magtatapos sa kalima. Sa ikalima. The altar is the place where God answers our prayer. Kung gusto mo na tayo, yung ating mga panalangin, ay tuguni ng Diyos, come to the altar. Ang dami ko ng panalangin. Bakit po, Pastor, hindi na tinutugol ng Diyos ang aking panalangin? Why? Because you are not going, you are not meeting the Lord to the altar. Kaya hindi na tutugol ng Diyos ang iyong mga panalangin. Hallelujah. Tingnan po natin. Receiving answers to your prayer is in the altar. Healing, peace in the altar and direction. Luke chapter 1 verse 11 to 13. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw the angel, he was troubled and overcome with fear. Tatatanan niyo ba si Zachariah? Wala po siyang anak. Si Zachariah po ang tatay ni John the Baptist. Yes. Are you with me? Pero wala po siyang anak. So, lagi niya inisip, ah, bakit wala kaya akong anak? Okay? <coughs> Pero sabi doon, doon natanggap ni Sakaraya ang tugon sa kanyang panalangin. Ano ang deepest prayer na meron tayo? Go to the altar. The Lord will reveal you, He will reveal to us His answer to the altar. Verse 13, But the angel, of the, the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Sakaraya, because your petition in prayer was heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will name him John. 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 Papangalanan mo siyang Juan. Bakit? Nakipag-meet, nakipagtagpo itong si Sakaraya doon sa altar ng Diyos. Tinugun ng Diyos ang kanyang panalangin. Doon sa altar. Hallelujah. The last. Sakaraya was God the man. A priest. Scripture does that One time record that he had ever received a word from the Lord. This day he was in he was in bless. His name had been drawn to burn incense before the altar. The altar. Atandang po natin. The altar. Yun lamang po ang pwede natin lapitan. Okay. He was in need. He was hurting. He had a deep, deep hunger for a child. In this day. 
he was at the altar. And what happened? God spoke to Zachariah at the altar. What is your deepest prayer? That you need to receive answer. Go to the altar. Hallelujah. Go to the altar. Babalik po tayo. 2 Samuel 24-25 yung ating key verse kanina. And they will build an altar to the Lord and offer burnt offering and peace offering so the Lord be fast responded to the plea of the land and the flock was averted from Israel. Come to the altar a place of adoration and amazement as Noah did. Love sacrifice as father as love sacrifice of a father as Abraham to Isaac. Thanksgiving and for thanks, thanksgiving for God's tolerance and giving us amnesty. Where anointing and God's calling is always available. Last, receiving direction and answers to our prayer. Go to the altar. Meet the Lord at the altar. Come and meet Him at the altar. Sabi po nung awit kanina, sabi po nung awit kanina, When I seek you, the more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you. The more I find you. More I find you. Kapag hinahanap po natin ng Diyos, the more we seek God, the more we find Him. The more we ask God in His altar, the more we answer His prayer. Answers to our prayer. And the more we found Him, the more we will love Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us all stand. Hallelujah, Father. Tayo po ay lumapit sa alta ng Diyos. Maranasan po natin ang Diyos. Pagliligtas ng Panginoon, only meeting, meeting God in the altar of God. If you want your answers to your prayer, come to the altar. If you want anointing, come to the altar. If you want the love of God, the altar. If you want to worship the Lord, come to the altar. Ngayon po, iniimitahan po tayo ng Panginoon. Come to the altar and worship the Lord to the altar. Sige po, tayo po imawit sa Panginoon. Tas mo natin yung ating mga kamay. Hallelujah. Worship and meet the Lord in the altar. In the altar, there is God. God's love is available in the altar. God's answer to our prayer is available in the altar. All you need to do is meet the Lord in the altar. Magkaroon po tayo ng espesyal na oras. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Ang Diyos po mismo ang nag-i-feel sa atin na lumapit po tayo sa atin. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Only Jesus. Ang Diyos lamang po, si Jesus lamang ang mga magbigay ng solusyon sa anumang prayer natin. Siya lamang ang katungunan sa ating mga prayer. Hallelujah. If you want to experience God's God's anointing, God's presence, come to the other of God.
God be the glory. Uh, salamat po sa mensahe about the altar. It's our understanding about the altar. I look at it earlier, same, even in Greek word, altar is altar. So, wala na doon yung altar. But in the physical description of the altar, it says that it is raised area or a prominent place in your home, in the church. Yes, correct. Here, this is the altar. Yes. The pulpit, this is a prominent area. <coughs> Speakers are not speaking behind, only here up front. And what else we understand about the altar? It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of offering. It's a place of thanksgiving. But I'm very familiar about the altar. It's a place of marriage. Sino dito yung happily married? Yan. 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 Will be about to get married. Shirley, 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 who among here is not yet married? Not yet married. Come on, don't be shy. I can you may get that to the ground. Who among here is not yet married? Okay. But in your own rights, in your own understanding, you should be married. Married with the one and only bridegroom before you go into physical marriage. Yun ang unang yung dapat ko lang. Ang unang dapat makipagniig kayo because marriage is a covenant. And when you go to the altar, first, being single lady, single woman and man, makipagniig muna kayo sa Panginoon. Make him the center of your life. Be safe first. Manguna muna sa inyo, Panginoon. When I ask my inaanak na lalaki, sabi ko, are you ready? Kung hindi siya atras, eh, okay na. Because when you go to the altar, you need to be ready. It's a sacrifice. And what is your sacrifice being single going to the altar? Ano sinyo nung muna yung excess baggage? Kasi galit ang Panginoon sa may mga excess baggage. Padala niyo sa Kanya. At siya ang magdadala ng mga baggage niyo. In, in Romans 8, Paul dissected people as two groups. One is simple nature and the other one is controlled by the Holy Spirit. In this present state of your life, nasaan kayo? One of us is still there. Dahil habang buhay, nagkakasala ang tao. However, when you said that you're making sacrifice, what kind of sacrifice, brothers and sisters? Going to the church, giving your tithes, giving your offering, playing songs of front, musicians, UPM, Grace Angels Ministry, deacons, attendees. Yeah, that's that sacrifice. And it's being acknowledged by God. However, what is more important to Him is not the sacrifice because He owns all of this. 
He owns all of this. He owns our wealth. He owns our possessions. He owns our health. He owns our being, well-being. He owns us. What He is asking to each and every one of us is our obedience. You will not be considering it as sacrifice if you will be following Christ as His obedient child. So He is acknowledging this kind of obedience. And I would like to read you the verse from Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says there, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and perfect will. So it will start from us before we'll be able to go to that altar, to approach that altar, it needs to start from you, brothers and sisters. In the renewing of your mind, do not conform and how you'll be able to do that? Sabi kang ina, yes, sabi ni, ni Brother Emil, I will not be able to do that on my own. Certainly, you will not be able to do that on your own. What is required? In Romans 8.5, it says there, Those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Holy Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. Go to that altar, open your heart, let always the Spirit come with you. Amen, Father. You're doing this not as sacrifice to the Lord, but an obedience. What He's asking from each and every one of you? A living sacrifice. And God, <laughs> is accepting each and every one of you no matter where you are right now no matter how think of yourself right now that you're dirty that you're incompetent that you're not worthy but with your obedience god is running running after you to embrace you to hold you and to love you Lord, we thank you and we glorify your name. We thank you very much for the message that you have bestowed to our brother, to our pastor, to our friend, Pastor Dennis. Thank you for using him, utilizing him, being your footstool, having the courage to express to us, each and every one of us, that yes, Lord. We are not worthy to even at your foot, Panginoon. You know. We are not worthy even to look at you, O God. But you make us worthy with your love. And whatever sacrifices that we will be giving to you is not enough. We will never be enough and we will never be complete. You, your life, your hands, your blood, your mercy, your grace, that is, Lord, will make us complete. Look at the heart of these children of yours. Wag Panginoon ang kanilang mga kakulangan ang iyong makita, Panginoon. Wag Panginoon ang kanilang karumihan ang iyong makita, Panginoon. Kundi ang patuloy na pagsasumikap, their striving heart, their open heart to continue to serve you and to be Christ-like, Panginoon. Yung mamuhay na Ikaw ang nakikita, Ikaw ang ipinapasapamuhay, Panginoon. We will not be able to do it on our own. Why we are going to your church even though we are sinners? But that's why we are going to your church, Panginoon, because we are sinners. How much more if we are not approaching you? 
how much more our state if we are not looking to you, Father. How much more is our condition if you are not there with us, Father. That's why we thank you, we glorify you, we give you back all the honor and glory. Amen, Father. Holy Spirit, thank you for always being our saints, Father. We will not be able to do it on our own, but with you, with your love, with your grace, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. And we glorify your name. Can I ask each and everyone to raise their hand? We are of Christology. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this worship service, for you that is always able and to keeping us in our stumbles, Panginoon, and always you being present, whatever the circumstances in your glorious presence, that we even with our fault, but however with great joy, you're still accepting us, Panginoon, to the only God, our Savior, Amen, glory, majesty, power, and authority, Hallelujah. through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore, everybody proclaims, Amen. 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 our visitors. May I call on Pastor Denise? Uh, we'll acknowledge po our visitors. Salamat po sa pagdamon niyo muli. Uh, remember po, this is uh, the name of the church is GICM. But as you can see, we only mentioned GICM on the last part. Because it's not about the physical church. It's about the church of Christ. Yes. Everyone is uh, welcome po sa panambahan ng Panginoon. Uh, we love you very, very much. Uh, visitors, we like to acknowledge the presence and also please come up front. Uh, si Sister JC or Brother JC. Sister JC, welcome po. Welcome po. Invited brother Nico. After three years, I'm still invited. I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to be a part of it. Brother Julius Asuelo. And welcome po. And Sister Mitch. Welcome to And thanks be to God po sa buhay ni Mami Mira Welcome to all the people Salamat po sa pag-invite niyo sa mga kapatid And I would like to acknowledge this Si Sister Mira po is first time kong na-meet ng anniversary natin And I would like this to post a challenge to all of you And all of us Napakarami na po niyang lang tayo sa church. Come on, may na naman kayo. Tayo. And of course, we will be welcoming back si si paring Mike and their family. Amen! Come, come, come. Come, si paring Mike po and si Sister Mel, si Jay, si Noah, and Bison. Bison. Ito po yung simple giveaways po ng ng GICM. Pwede nyo pong reviewin to. This is about our program last August. Ito po yung Explore, Engage, and Evangelize. So sa likod po nito, there's some text messages po and about how to be able to talk to Christ Jesus. So yun po, salamat po. Ibigin po, kita. And ikaw, ibigin mo po sa... And Pastor, baka ibigay kila ba? Mike? Ayan po. So since wala po si Pastor Ray, hindi po kayo makakapagpa picture sa mga magigandang lalaki kasi siya po yun eh. Yun na lang po sa malalakas ang sex appeal. 
Thank you.